Cardinal Tagle, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining me from Manila. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Amanpour. Thank you for having me. Cardinal, the Pope's visit comes amidst a terrible wave of terror attacks in France. The Pope has condemned what he called this deviant extremism. Can I ask you your views on what yes. happened and whether you would have tolerated that kind of mockery and perhaps even offense in a satirical magazine? You know, wherever and whenever human life is uh, desecrated, the whole of uh, humanity should mourn. And uh, this type of mourning goes beyond religious, economic, educational, social, cultural barriers. And so I and the Filipino people are in uh, communion with those who are suffering. And uh, we want to tell the world that even if we have differences, we should not allow differences of all sorts to lead us to a disregard of human dignity. Yes, once in a while we feel slighted by uh, some people's uh, comments, etc. I think there are two angles here. Let us all try to be as respectful as we can to people who differ from us. But when people differ from us, we cannot use that diversity or difference as an excuse to be disrespectful also to the point of uh, desecrating human life. So we are very, very sorry for this state of, uh, uh, or, or this condition. Cardinal, Al-Qaeda in Yemen has just taken responsibility. There is a lot of security in place for Pope Francis's visit to the Philippines. There have been plots against previous popes yes. by Al-Qaeda. You have a population which is 10% Muslim, and some terrorist groups have allied themselves with the Islamic State. The Pope has spoken out very strongly about this, what he called deviant Islam, urging the Islamic faith to condemn this and saying that they are eliminating God with this kind of, of brutal and violent message. Are you concerned for the safety of the Pope today during his visit? What consoles us here in the Philippines as we prepare for the visit is uh, the participation of the uh, administration, the Aquino administration, our uh, security people, the police force, the military, and even the ordinary citizens. And may I add, even our brothers and sisters of the, of the uh, Islamic faith here in the Philippines, everyone wants this visit to be meaningful and safe. And we also, while we regret really the loss of life, especially as uh, as uh, done by uh, terrorist groups, we also do not want to jump to the conclusion that these acts are, are, are always associated with the religion called Islam. Our experience here in the Philippines, I can speak for myself, we have many friends of the Islamic religion and they are the first ones to say acts of terror are not are not part of our religion and I believe them we have a lot of peace loving people and they cry also when their religion is in a way misused do you feel that this will open a wider schism between Filipino society well, we're trying uh, our best not to lead to that, this event, you know. And uh, we in the Philippines, we're in uh, the stage where uh, a law is uh, uh, close to be being uh, passed. It is the so-called Bangsamoro Law, which will recognize the relative autonomy of uh, the region, the Muslim re um, regions in Mindanao. But uh, uh, a few days ago, I was... Uh, in a conversation with uh, 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 a government official uh, in charge of uh, Muslim Filipinos, and we agreed that while this uh, law uh, is a, a great, great step forward, you know, we also have to do something on the grassroots level. Uh, signing a law is one thing, but healing prejudices, healing biases, 
uh, among ordinary people, this is where everyone should work. This is where we need a concerted effort. And uh, we have been establishing good relationships you know, uh, between uh, groups so that we can further peace on the grassroots level. For a long, long time, Asian Catholics yes have said and they've complained that the Vatican doesn't pay enough attention to them. They've complained about that. The Pope has just raised a Sri Lankan saint. Do you think under Pope Francis, this sort of European-centric, you know, keep Asia uh, sort of on the outskirts is changing? Well, I think he is just continuing what his predecessors had already started. Here in Asia, and we claim that Jesus was born on Asian soil. Well, this is the most populous continent of the world, but the Christian population remains like only 3% of the total uh, Asian population. And half of that Christian population is found in the Philippines. The past popes, the past 50 years, have been trying their best to link Christianity with Asian cultures and sensibilities. We have the same hope with uh, Pope Francis. What will his visit mean to you, to your nation and to Asia? The Philippines at this time, you know, we have just been uh, coming out of uh, many uh, natural calamities and also human-made disasters. The people are just uh, uh, scarred, just even tired and weary. But you know, we are a people that continues on hoping. Now the coming of the Pope will intensify that. But uh, uh, Ms. Amanpour, Christian, I also uh, hope that the Holy Father, seeing the joy, seeing the resilience, seeing the hopefulness of our simple and poor and suffering people, I hope he would also be inspired. After all, he says, the church should go to the peripheries, not just in order to bring something to the periphery, but also to get something from the periphery, to learn valuable lessons from the periphery. Cardinal, you know that there is a, a group of cardinals, high-ranking, still quite conservative cardinals, who have been pushing back very strongly against what the Pope has tried to do with his last conclave, for instance. And the highest-ranking American cardinal, uh, Burke, has been demoted because he resisted the Pope's reforms. In fact, he has said the Pope is not free to change the Church's teachings with regard to the immorality of homosexual acts or the insolubility of marriage or any other doctrine of faith. Does the Pope have the backing of the hierarchy to push forward the reforms he wants to? Does he have your backing? I am of the opinion that the Holy Father has the backing of the cardinals. If there are some uh, differences in opinions, I think the Holy Father made it clear, especially during the, the Synod of Bishops. He says, let us not be afraid of diversity. He even said, feel free to express your opinions, even those that do not agree with mine. But he also said, as Pope, he is a son of the Church. So he, he is not there to create his, new, his own doctrines just for the sake of being original. No, he will uh, defend the, the tradition, but as a pastor, mindful of the changes that have happened in the, the contemporary world, the, uh, the changes in cultures, it, it is a pastoral imperative that we see how can we become more effective evangelizers in a changing world. Colonel Tagle, thank you very much indeed for joining me from Manila. Oh, thank you very much.